I hired a bunch of freelancers off of Fiverr to build a fresh YouTube channel from start to finish, and at the end of this video, we'll see how they did compared to my video stats and analytics. Also, this video is sponsored by Fiverr. Currently, we have nothing. If you're about to start a new YouTube channel, chances are that you have an idea in your head for the type of content you'd like to create. For Nate Wealth, the channel that you're watching right now, this was definitely the case. However, I'm looking to completely outsource this endeavor, so I started by looking for a freelancer to come up with an idea for my first video. I found a seller that would give me, quote, 10 viral and trendy content ideas for only $10. I figured I'd just pick one of these titles and then also use it to select my niche. Works for me. In general, you should do your best to communicate exactly what you want to freelancers so that you end up with something that you're happy with. However, I'm lazy and wanted to do as little work as possible for this channel, so I literally just told them to pick a niche that I could blow up in and just give me some ideas for it. To be honest, basically paying for an idea man seemed to me like I was getting scammed, so my expectations were quite low. But within a couple of days, I received a list of 10 different video ideas in the niche of gadgets and tech. It's a bit of a weird niche to me because I personally don't find it very interesting, but it was definitely a smart choice and we can all learn something from his decision. Let me explain. First off, it's a niche with very low competition, meaning there aren't very many big channels making videos in this niche. This is significant because it also has a high view potential, with low sub channels bringing in upwards of millions of views, meaning I have a chance to blow up in this niche very quickly. Second, the videos in this niche are inexpensive and not difficult to make. Research is as simple as going on Amazon and editing relies heavily on stock and product videos that are readily available to me online. If you're starting a fresh YouTube channel, these two factors are something that you may want to consider when choosing your niche. However, unlike me, you probably want to also pick something you're passionate about. I ended up going with this title because it had the highest number of views next to it, which leads us to the next step in totally outsourcing this YouTube channel. Branding, meaning the channel's name, logo, and banner. The last seller was actually solid, but there's no way paying somebody to come up with a channel name will be worth it. I found a seller that would send me 10 channel names for only $5. I have my doubts, but hey, maybe she'll make it worth spending my entire weekly allowance. So I gave her the idea for my first video and just told her to get cracking with it. I ended up going with gadgets because it sounded the least bad out of all of my options and then moved on to the third freelancer of my journey, a logo and banner designer. This seller only cost me $30 and came with unlimited revisions, which of course I chose not to take advantage of because like I said, I'm lazy. I gave him very, very specific and detailed instructions, and within a couple of days, he had my order finished. The banner was pretty cool, encompassing stuff related to the niche of men's gadgets. However, I was less happy with the logo that he designed. Up close and big, it looks nice, but channel profile pictures on YouTube are shown at very small sizes, meaning the lack of contrast and abundance of elements make it impossible to digest most of the time. Obviously, I could have just told him to make it simpler, but as I've said a few times now, I'm lazy. Instead, we're just gonna learn from his work. When making your own profile picture, keep it as simple as possible and use contrasting colors so that you're actually able to see whatever it is you've just designed. For example, mine is literally just a white smiley face on Druid 5 minutes on top of a black background. It's really easy to tell what it is from far away and it just looks good enough. Joshua Mayo is another great example, as his logo is just his face on a blank background. Whatever you do, just remember to keep it simple. Now that we have a name, logo, and banner, we can actually create our channel. So, Obviously, I went ahead and made it. None of the Fiverr sellers provided me with a channel description, so I just left it blank. This actually looks pretty nice. The next step in the process of outsourcing a fresh YouTube channel is to create the channel's first video. Based on the list of titles given to me by the first Fiverr seller, it would be about the top 10 men's gadgets of 2023. I found this guy who'd write me an eight minute, quote, professional YouTube script that drives retention for $250 and just quickly gave him the rundown of what I wanted. Later in the video, we'll see if his video script actually, quote, drove retention. Attention. But within a few days, he had something back to me and was nice enough to even revise the final product until I was happy, which once again, I didn't take advantage of. The Fiverr seller's name was Kane, and he also included a bunch of titles and even a sample description for the video without me asking, which I thought was nice. I've done lots of freelance script writing and have scripted videos with millions of views in the past, and overall, I thought this script was solid actually. The intro was short and straight to the point, and for each gadget in the video, he told my audience why they needed said product, for example, to help them break their phone addiction, and then described it in more detail with specific examples and price points, which I thought was pretty effective. The only thing I'd personally changed is the last few lines in the intro, when he writes, My name's Gadgex. Let's get started. This really just wastes time because nobody really cares what your channel name is, especially when they can read it right under the video title. If you're interested in learning more about video scripts, pop my video on the subject open in a new tab to watch after this one. Once again, a solid investment. Because they sponsor this video, Fiverr provided me with free credit to spend on these sellers. 
meaning I had to give them a budget for the video beforehand. This was all well and good, except for the fact that I forgot to include money for a voiceover in said budget. Yikes. But before I show you guys how I got out of that conundrum, Fiverr has a really cool influencer program that makes it easy for you to get Fiverr credit promoting the platform. All you have to do is first pick a tier, then apply with your YouTube channel, and finally make content about Fiverr to receive Fiverr credit to reinvest back into your channel. I personally think this is cool, especially if you're utilizing Fiverr to speed up production on your channel and can reinvest the credit that you earn from the sponsored content. Use my link in the description if you're interested. So I decided to record the voiceover myself because at one point I myself had a Fiverr gig for editing. So technically I'd still be outsourcing the voiceover to a Fiverr seller. This was pretty straightforward and I used the same workflow that I talk about in this video to record my voiceovers. So pop that open in a new tab to watch later if you're interested. The target audience for this video about men's gadgets ranged in ages from 25 to about 45, as opposed to the younger audience that I target with my videos at 16 to 24 years old. So I made sure to slow down my speech and really just talk conversationally to the audience. With a voiceover and script complete, the actual video itself needed editing. I work with freelance video editors all the time, so I was curious to see if Fiverr could deliver results similar to what I'm used to. I contacted a few sellers and pretty much told them to do whatever they wanted as long as it ended up being an engaging and professionally edited video. One seller got back to me pretty quickly and said that she could do it in seven days for only $300, which is a pretty reasonable price for an eight minute video from my experience. I basically left everything up to her discretion and a week later she came back with this. It's a lot slower paced than the stuff that I do for sure, and the editing isn't anything crazy either. However, considering the fact that this new channel's target audience is older than mine, the style suits the video well. She sprinkles in movie clips here and there, uses nice motion graphics throughout, and makes cuts that are pleasing to the viewer's eye. The only thing that really needed fixing was the spelling of the channel's name in the intro. I provided her with a script that spelled it correctly, so I'm not sure why she didn't use it. However, she also gave me three revisions on the video that I could have just used to fix the problem, so it's kind of my fault too. Now all we need is a thumbnail to accompany the edit. Just like editing, designing thumbnails is something that I've outsourced a lot, even dating back to my first channel. I found these two sellers that had some cool sample thumbnails in their portfolio and ended up buying from this guy for 40 bucks. Once again, I gave him full creative freedom and absolutely no help or input whatsoever except for the title of the video. I'm not going to show you the thumbnail quite yet, but by the time I got it back, I was ready to publish the video. The freelancer that I hired to write the video script had given me a, quote, optimized video description and tags as a bonus. So I slapped those into the description, added the thumbnail, and then uploaded the channel's first video to YouTube. At the time of recording, the video has been up for about four days and has 80 views with an 8.7% CTR and 30% average view duration, which if I'm being honest means basically nothing with only 80 views. However, I've also done no promotion of this channel, so 80 views is actually solid. The retention graph is also pretty good for a video without an audience of subscribers to show it to first, and I'm sure if I kept outsourcing videos for this channel, I'd be able to bring in a lot of views in this niche. For contrast, here's the retention on one of my channel's latest videos. Here's what the thumbnail looks like. It's really good, especially for only 40 bucks. If you want to hire the designer or honestly any of the sellers that I used in this video, click my links in the description. And if you want to learn how to make thumbnails like this, then watch my video about making clickable YouTube thumbnails next.